For thousands of years, the mighty Mississippi River has created the most naturally nutrient-rich growing soil in the southern delta lands within the United States of America. And along this life-giving waterways path is where Southern University was born. In fact, since its charter was granted in 1880, this historically black college and university has always been close to the Mississippi River. From its very first cradle in the Crescent City of New Orleans through its relocation to Baton Rouge in 1914, Southern University and A&M College found that by settling right onto Scott's Bluff on the east bank of the Mississippi River, it continued to grow in size and strength. Much like the trees along the river's edge, this educational institution's roots grew deep as its branches reached reached lofty heights. Then, at the dawn of the 21st century, came the creation of the Southern University Agricultural Research and Extension Center. From its inception in the year 2000, the researchers, educators, staff, and leadership within the center and its research and extension facilities have continued to advance and share the knowledge needed to create a better future. With its land-grant role, the Southern University Agricultural Research and Extension Center has a mission to conduct statewide basic and applied research and to disseminate information to the citizens of Louisiana in a manner that is useful. The center continuously offers a structured path toward knowledge for residents throughout the state. By analyzing the nature of the challenges faced by those seeking help, we apply our combined experiences to develop a solution that aims directly at an improved outcome. Because of the professionalism combined with personal consideration when dealing with the public, the Southern University Agricultural Research and Extension Center gains the proven trust of more and more people seeking advice. Over the years, this style of engagement translated into a resilient reputation for the center based on giving positive experiences while passing on relevant knowledge across Louisiana, linking citizens with opportunities for success. This comes from the authentic experiences and specific skill sets of our leadership, faculty, and staff. That I grew up on a little farm up in North Louisiana, and that experience, I think, that working on the farm, working with my father, understanding uh, as being the eldest child in the family, I got a chance to deal with the business aspect as much as I did the work aspect. Understanding when he went to talk to his neighbors and those neighbors that looked up to him and how he found out information and the importance of having a mentor to mentor relationship and the importance that the university and related entities can play into the help, uh, helping a farmer be successful. So as a result of that, I, I went in agriculture. I wanted to help improve my father's farm, but also work with other farmers. See, my father taught me agriculture. That's why I'm in agriculture. It, it, it was important to me. I saw a future in it, and uh, I went off to school and got further developed in the science techniques of agriculture. And uh, here I am. The Ag Center impacts the lives of a wide range of Louisiana citizens and indeed citizens in the region. Many of whom have problems with poverty, uh, education, unemployment, health issues, etc. Without this place, most people in the area that we serve would be worse off. The Southern University Agricultural Research and Extension Center has actively supported the increased introduction of goats into the animal-based assets of smaller farms. One effective way to begin the conversation with a farmer is to compare the economics of raising goats to animals they already have on their farm. We encourage farmers and ranchers to incorporate goats into their already existing livestock. Compared to cattle, goats can thrive with much less land, feed, and water. Goats eat anything and they don't require as many vaccinations as cattle. They are a low cost and low maintenance animal. Although goats are relatively simple to care for, farmers must consider many different aspects to any additional animal responsibilities. One of the strongest economic advantages to introducing goats to a farmer's livestock is how easily and effectively a few goats can grow into a considerable financial return. Goats are so proficient at natural birth that they require less resources and less care. Goats don't require any human assistance to give birth to a healthy offspring. While 6 to 10 percent of calves born die at birth or soon after due to birthing difficulty. This puts the cow and the calf at jeopardy. 
the former could lose them both. Plus, most GOAT births are twins or triplets, so a farmer gets good returns at every birthing cycle. With the strong international demand for goat meat and increasing interest in the U.S., a small farmer has a ready-made market for their growing goat population. Much of the goat meat in North America is imported from overseas, so a farmer in the United States can get a good price for their goats because goats raised here have a much lower transportation cost to reach the U.S. market. Plus, the consumer receives high-quality meat that is much fresher than what can be processed and shipped from overseas. It's a win-win situation for consumers and small farmers. In the deep south of the United States, people take comfort in traditions passed on from generation to generation. This kind of cultural preservation can strengthen the personal roots felt in families and communities. However, some family traditions or peer group habits can have a very negative impact on the health of large populations, especially the economically underserved. Among the challenges are hypertension and heart disease, which take the lives of thousands of people each year. Unfortunately, another threat complicating public health can be linked to poor diet choices, which contributes to obesity. Hope than you would read the newspaper, you you would look at TV, and they would they would present information on obesity. And based on the research that have been conducted and the highlights presented in the state of Louisiana and the nation, obesity is one of the most serious problems there, is, and health in general. Equally startling is how obesity, combined with reduced interest in exercise and less than healthy diet decisions, can increase the number of people facing the long-term effects of type 2 diabetes. Teaching people ways to address diabetes, obesity, high blood pressure, heart disease, and the negative effects that come from such conditions is part of what the Southern University Agricultural Research and Extension Center continues to do. The population we serve face obesity issues and what we do here to help them is to teach them how to change their lifestyles. But they also offer tasty new options that are supported by scientific research. This includes a major initiative to refine and popularize food products made with hibiscus plants. Animal studies show that hibiscus lowers cholesterol and reduces the oxidation of low density cholesterol, LDL. In humans, a study have shown that drinking hibiscus tea every day reduces blood pressure and as a result, it lowers the risk of heart diseases. Hibiscus is also very rich in antioxidants. These can help absorb free radicals, which are particles that can cause cellular damage and affect your overall health. In addition to the health benefits of consuming foods with hibiscus, the Southern University Agricultural Research and Extension Center is also promoting hibiscus cultivation as a viable crop for small Louisiana farmers. This is also backed up with verified agricultural research. Here in the greenhouse, we are conducting a hibiscus zabdarifa study to determine which variety grows best in Louisiana. We have varieties from all over the world. Some of these varieties are tall, others are bushy but before you can go to that stage of the seedlings they all start off at this seedling stage as you see it has a really good root structure then we get to this stage where the plant is a little bit more mature and it's about a month old where it's ready to plant in the field here in Louisiana Fields, we're looking at different types of hibiscus zabdarifa to see how they respond to natural soil and climate conditions. We want to know what varieties grow the best calyx and foliage yields. This information will help make hibiscus zabdarifa a more valuable crop to Louisiana farmers. Among the programs within the Southern University Agricultural Research and Extension Center, the activities involving hibiscus seem well positioned to have a far-reaching impact. That the one that probably has the greatest potential will be the hibiscus research that we're doing. And I think that it has the greatest uh, potential because we have built the system, a linear uh, relationship where we have production, we have someone analyzing the, uh, the, the components of the hibiscus for medicinal purposes. We have someone in the nutritional uh, research trying to understand what's in it and what can we extract from it as well as trying to create a product at the end of the day. So we have the jams, we have the jellies, we have
have the uh, tea. And the project on hibiscus has, uh, shows more potential. Uh, in the last four years, I have observed that project to be funded. Research conducted on the production side of hibiscus. And it moved now to products. Products have been developed from that program. And the next step now is to move to the marketing side. Each year, tons of discarded trees and limbs from cities and suburbs go into landfills. We're studying the science and economics of redirecting this natural wood and turn it into biofuel that can run our cars. Studies to transform trees into biofuel have obvious global implications. As the natural fossil fuel deposits become more difficult to reach, the cost of our ever-growing energy needs will most likely drive up the price at the pump. But the Southern University Agricultural Research and Extension Center is responding to the urgent call to identify untapped fuel opportunities. And I think we do a fantastic job discovering information consistent with the problems that we observe among the community or in the state and we research those problems. Biofuel from natural raw materials that can be grown and easily harvested in a renewable way has many environmental and economic benefits. The goal of the renewable fuel standard is to produce 36 billion gallons of bio-based fuel by the year 2022. We currently have experience extracting ethanol from corn, however corn alone will not meet that goal. New sources must be discovered in order to find viable sources for biofuel, and trees are a viable source. As shown here, the vital importance of the Southern University Agricultural Research and Extension Center is best summarized by some of the people who keep it on track to make great strides in their mission. You develop a lot of values from being involved in agriculture and farm life. Uh, you're, you're taught a sense of responsibility uh, and ownership uh, in farming. And as we uh, might take a crop to the market, uh, we see, you know, what comes from it. The Extension Outreach Program benefits both the institution and the people we serve. They do better with a quality of life that was not within reach prior to our intervention. And the institution benefits because it has directly and indirectly impacted the economy of the state. You have to continue to lift up what are the themes, what are your purpose, uh, what's your mission. Ensure that, and then you do it consistently and continuously so they become ingrained into the faculty and staff that you work with. You continue to remind them that uh, what their purpose and what their role is. And then you walk that by making certain the things you do provide the outcomes that are intended to do. We will certainly continue to work with our limited resource farmers throughout the, uh, the region, rural residents. However, we will uh, have to intensify, because of the change in demographics, we will have to intensify our efforts in making life better for the urban residents that we serve. And those activities will include uh, continuation and intensification of community gardens, uh, uh, small local farms located close to urban areas, but it will also include educational, uh, nutritional uh, programs as well. And so the Mississippi River continues to sustain the soil of the Southern Delta region. Along this naturally fertile waterway, small tree saplings grow tall and strong to demonstrate the ongoing cycle of life. And nestled beside the mighty river's water line at Scotts Bluff, the Southern University Agricultural Research and Extension Center continues to explore and discover new knowledge to help nurture the land and its people.